what is a church who will stand against the king no one can no one will who will stand against the Lord
territory it belongs to. so much and want to appreciate the presence of all of you. God is a good God and the devil remains a bad devil. Shout hallelujah. We want to appreciate all of you. Turn to your neighbor and say you have done well to be in this place today. Turn to your neighbor and say you look much more better than last week. And turn to your neighbor and say, hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to appreciate um, all of you. Look beautiful, I'm telling you. You look ready for God's word. And um, we are trusting God that God will bless us even today. Next week, try and bring your Bibles, but stand on your feet with your digital, it's fine. Um, stand on your feet. Try and get yourself a Bible if you don't have one. Hallelujah. This book is necessary for you to carry it. I know you have it in your gadgets. It's fine, but I don't trust those things. I know what I'm talking about. You know, I've read several Bibles in a gadget and you find one verse is twisted and you're not aware and you read it that way and you obey it falsely that way. So get this one. Nobody can change it as long as it's in your hands. Hallelujah. Let's lift our Bibles with our right hands. Those that have them in their phones, just lift up your phone by your right hand. Just for today, next week, it will be a Bible. And let's say, Father, I thank you for your word and dear Lord I bring my heart today speak to my life change me by the ministry of your word in the name of Jesus I surrender myself to your will and I say in Jesus name I believe the word 
and I believe it's power. And I thank you that you're speaking to my life in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout Amen and give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. God bless you. Sit down. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles from the book of Matthew. From verse number 15, we're reading the same scripture we read last week. And then we're going to spring from there. The good Lord will bless us. Matthew 16 from verse 15. Um, it reads as follows. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Bazalwani, this is an amazing scripture about the church. And I personally haven't found any scripture that describes who the church is in the Bible uh, except this verse of scripture that shows on what power what purpose, what is it that God entails when he says this is the church um, Matthew 16 it's one of those scriptures that will explain and tell you on exactly what level one should be when he is supposed to qualify to be called a church. And today I just want to try and define what a church is. So if you were to put a title to my message today, you will say our title is What is a Church? Let us all say after me, say what is a church? Can you shout it much more louder? I said it last week that um, we come to church, we do church, we do all these things that we call church, yet very few of us understand exactly on what a church is. So today we're going to answer every little question concerning a church. A church, people who do not believe have their own definition of what a church is. And people who believe but have not been exposed to the teaching of the church define the church in the same way the world defines the church. And it becomes powerless. Because if you miss it in definition, you will miss it in operations. You didn't get me. If you miss to define on what a church is, you're not in any way going to operate as a church. And that's the danger of us coming to church when we do not know 
What is it that is a church? Some will point at a building, a beautiful building and say, that is our church. And that's how heathens and people who do not believe view a church. A church is not a building. God says he's not going to dwell in buildings that are made with the hands of people. He dwells in a person. Let us all say he dwells in a person. So you can imagine when we come here, we are coming as groups of people of whom God dwells in. The people that God dwells in, they come together to make up what we call a church. The Bible says, do not you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So a church is the group of people that come together, each one of them having God in the inside of them. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. We, we've got two words and we're going to come back to this scripture that we read. We've got two ways that um, try and describe what a church is from Greek. The first word is ecclesia. Let us all say ecclesia. Ecclesia. Ecclesia is church. But we have another word called kuriakon. Kuriakon. That's where we derive the English word called church. Or kerk in Africans. Kuriakon. That's where we take the English word church from. And I will tell you all what these two words entail. And the good Lord will bless us. We'll be very close to getting the actual meaning of what a church is. So the first word that I spoke to you about is the word ecclesia. Let us all say ecclesia. So Ecclesia had no church implication in its origin. Ecclesia was just a gathering of people, but the way in which they would gather in Greek, it would be so similar in a way the people of God gather. Because the word Ecclesia in Greek, it means the called out say called out so in those ancient time they would at particular times call people to come and discuss certain issues about certain problems that certain people are having and such a gathering when you come and solve other people's problems it was called ecclesia so in true sense, when we say this is an ecclesia, we mean the people that are called out because there is a problem that they are supposed to solve of some other people. You didn't hear it. You did not hear it. I said, we are the called out. We are the called out. We are the called out. But the reason why we come together is because somebody, somewhere, has a challenge. That is the purpose of your coming here. You are not coming for yourself. You are coming because you need to be taught on how you can solve some other people's problems. So if the church misses that, we become something else. We become something that which God did not purpose us to be. We are here to solve somebody's problems. And I know, <laughs> I know you came differently. Some of you, you came so that your problem can be solved. But that's not how God looks at you. God looks at you as a person that is coming so that you can be taught on how you can solve another person's problem. And if you miss that, you'll move from this church to the other. 
And you will never find satisfaction in your spirit because you're not doing what God has called you to do. And what am I trying to say? When you are trying to come so that people can solve your problem, you will not find any way in this world where the church is designed to solve your problems. This is the reason why when people are not treated properly, they leave church. When people are not greeted, they leave church because they don't understand what church is. Church is not a place where you go to be greeted. It's a place where you go to greet. It's not a place where you go to get your problem solved. It's a place where you go to solve somebody's problem. So when you, when, once you miss that, I am telling you, you'll get offended everywhere. Tell your neighbor, I say, I did not come here so that you can greet me. But I came here so that I greet you. Wow. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. We did not come in this place so that we can be handled properly. But we came in this place so that we can handle somebody properly. Shout hallelujah. 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 I did not come here so that I can be prayed for for healing. But I came here so that I can pray for somebody to be healed. When you have such attitude, you will never be offended. You will never be offended. Nobody will offend you. Nobody will offend you. Nobody will offend you. When they gossip about you, you will always tell them, I did not come here not to be gossiped, but I came here so that I can solve somebody's problem. And as long as I have not done my job, I'm not living. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Are you hearing me, child of God? Are you hearing me, child of God? You're not coming here for healing. You're coming here to heal. And as you heal others in the name of the Lord, your healing will come. Your healing will come. You will get your solution as you are solving other people's problems. Shout hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I said hallelujah. As you solve other people's problems, your problem will be solved as well. That's church. That's church. Now there is another word called kuriokon. That was ecclesia. There is another word called kuriokon. Kuriokon. It's a Greek word meaning dedicated to the Lord. Wow. Dedicated to the Lord. The other word is called out. The other word is dedicated to the Lord. If we can have this, this congregation that has understood these two words and begin to apply them in their lives to say, I am here because I'm called out to sort out people's problems. And I'm here so that I can dedicate my life to the Lord. These two are enough to make us a church. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, but when we have to come to the word called out, you got to understand that each one of us here are called. Many people do not understand that you do not go to a church by yourself. You go to a particular church by a calling. The first calling is the calling to salvation. The second calling that we have is calling to the body. When God calls you to a body, 
to his own body. It's a calling. We don't have time. I would give you a hundred scriptures. That shows you by you being here. You are just called. You are called. You are called. You are called. You are called. I said you are called. I said you are called. Hallelujah. And you got to understand it that way. That this is a calling. It's a calling. To go to a particular ministry and you stick there. It's a calling. 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 There is something that which God wants to fulfill. There is a mandate in that ministry that God wants to fulfill through you. Through you. Together with the rest of the Christians. We want to fulfill that mission. That God has placed in us. God has a mandate for every ministry. We are not mandated the same. <laughs> we are not mandated the same. For example, when, when Miracle Church's vision is to win souls. That's our mandate. If we put up buildings, we put up buildings so that we can put souls. That's our mandate. Our mandate is to win people for Christ. That's our vision. Our vision is to win people for Christ. Our vision is to win people for Christ. Our vision is to win people for Christ. When you go to a church, the first thing that you need to ask, what is the vision of this church? Any member that you come across in that ministry should be able to articulate the vision. If we are not, then we have missed it. We have missed the mandate. So, I am telling you that the vision of this church is to win people for Christ. Can we close our eyes? And I want you to say our vision is to win people for Christ. Say it again. Say our vision as a church is to win people for Christ. Anything we do, any building we make or we build is so that we can put people that are one for Christ. That's your vision. That's your vision. That's what God has called you out here for. To come and fulfill that mandate. In anyhow, in the way that God has called you. Some of you, God has called you in this way, in this way. But all of us, we got to put together all those things so that at the end of the day, we are winning people for Christ. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, so, people should know that going to church is a calling. If you miss that, you have missed it. We have missed the meaning of what the church is. Because going to church is always a calling. A calling. I know people will say when they are they go into ministry or they are pastors, they will say, I'm called. That's the first level of talking about calling. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says many are what? Many are what? But few are what? Chosen. Few are chosen. Many are called. And few are chosen. That differentiate between the call that we're talking about and what you usually call a call. What we mostly call a call, it's what is called the choosing. The choosing. When God calls us as a church like this, 
when we arrive here, God will choose his own people. And say, this one I want him to be a head usher. This one I want him or her to work in the welfare. This one I want them to work as evangelists. This I want them to work as pastors. This I want them to work. That is the choosing. That is the choosing. That is the choosing. That is the choosing. But all of us are called are called out to come and solve other people's problems. We are here to solve some other people's problems. Once you miss that, you have missed it. We're not a church. So what is it that really make us to fulfill this calling? It's exactly what God spoke to us in the book of Matthew chapter number 16. Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church. What did he mean when he said, upon this rock I will build my church? He meant himself, like I said last week. He meant upon himself he will build through what? Through spiritual revelation. Because this is where we have to come. Until we arrive there, we have not spoken about who the church is. We not a church just by the calling. We not a church by just solving other people's challenges. We've got to understand that that must come through revelation. If it doesn't come through revelation, we have not arrived at a spiritual level where we can be called a church even when we are called out. In other words, a church is a spiritual body. The Bible says, it's only those that are led by the spirit that can be called the sons of God. Until we arrive where we have revelation by the spirit of God. When we are still using our own intellect. We are just a bunch of society that are coming together in the name of church. But we have not arrived there. That's why we will argue over scriptures. Because we're using this. There's no revelation. So a church is when it begins to have a revelation. On who God is. And when it begins to have a revelation. Then it can serve the people. You will never serve the people. Until you know who God is. From the spirit. Not from your head. That's why. When we arrive in church, listen to me. When we arrive in a church, we put away our degrees. We put away what we know. Put it away. Don't be afraid. I have gone to school. But when I come to the things of God, I put my degrees away. And begin to listen to the voice of the spirit. <laughs> Hey, Zanini, when you come here, put away your degrees, throw them away, and be a child of God. Be a child of God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Then that, that's what makes you a church. Put your titles away. I've got many. I'm not saying this. I'm not a preacher who preaches ahead, even though you are educated when he's not educated. I've gone to school. Sorry to say that. I'm saying that so that you should not say he spoke about our education. Because he's jealous. No, no, no. I've got papers. I have papers. I've got papers. After all, I'm not a mister. <laughs> and 
I'm not, I'm not against ministers. I'm just trying to say I'm not talking about this thing because I'm against it. I'm talking about this thing because it does not work here. It does not work here. That's not the place for it here. 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 When we get out of here there, then we can pick up our things and begin to use, but it does not work here. Tell your neighbor, it does not work here. So we cannot use our intellect. We cannot use the wisdom that we acquired over years through education to want to argue biblical things. We need the spirit of God to be able to discern spiritual things and biblical things. And when we are like that, then we begin to be a church. When we reason the Bible through our mental capacities, we far away from being a church. We far away from being a church. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So what am I telling you? I'm telling you that Jesus said to Peter after he has answered his question from the spirit <laughs> Jesus said oh, I also call you Peter. I'm changing your name from Simon the son of Jonah because that's where all of us, when we get born again, we, we get born again from being sons of Jonah. Sons of John, sons of Makanani, sons of whoever your father or your mother is. You are taken from that level and God puts you into another level. And then he gives you a name. Even if you don't change your name, but he gives you a name. That name makes you to begin to understand the things of God differently from when you were Simon. It makes you to understand the things of God in a spiritual manner. That's why you cannot argue like heathens argue. You cannot argue like scholars do argue. Scholars argue their own way because they don't have the spirit of God. But when you become a child of God and you begin to operate in revelation, God promotes you. And he says from this one, then I can use to build my church on this rock. With this revelation, I can use to build my church on the rock, Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can imagine if we have people that are carnal, very carnal, and we try and put a proposal about what God has spoken to us on how they will reason over those things. Huh? They will quote scriptures but reason it carnally with no revelation. And then that does not make us a church. But when we are spiritual and we reason things spiritually out of revelation, God says, yes, with that one. Yes, with this one. Yes, with that one. Yes, with that one. We can build the church upon Jesus. Because they have spiritual revelation about God. And because of that, they look at things of God in the way they're supposed to be looked at as a church. Shout praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Do you understand child of God? Do you understand child of God? Do you understand child of God? Any topic, any topic, any, any doctrine, any subject that is there in the word of God can be looked at from the carnal point of view or the spiritual point of view. Depending on whether you are a church or you are just a bunch of people. Yeah. Mm. When you are a church, you look at it 
from revelation. When you are just a group of people, you will look at it just as an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Do you get my point? Can I close this message? Are you sure? Shout praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.